Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Today we're going to be talking about the museum's 1951 Chrysler camera car. Cars in Hollywood seem to be made for each other. They both involve motion, they both involve excitement, and they both involve appearance. You have to look good, you have to, you have to keep up. And the Chrysler camera car was ideal for doing that, it, keeping up, keeping up with the cars, keeping up with the filming. Before they had cars like this, uh, what, they, what Hollywood used to do, what the production studios used to do, is take big luxury cars like Lincolns and, and Cadillacs and, and Chryslers and chop them off behind the front uh, driver's compartment and then put flatbeds on them and put the cameras on or the sound equipment and then follow them around or they would tow a trailer behind them they would uh, have all kinds of apparatus all kinds of of um, scaffolding if you will and whatnot just to get the right angle for shooting um, well Chrysler thought you know what let's let's get a little creative here Hollywood's a burgeoning industry uh, we kind of have it together let's offer something a little bit special um, we'll start out by building two, uh, and they built two camera cars, uh, what they call insert vehicles, for the Hollywood Studios. This vehicle was the one that was directed to RKO Studios at the time Howard Hughes owned it, uh, one of the world's first billionaires. Today, a billionaire is kind of easy to come by, but uh, back in the early 50s, not so much. What Chrysler intended to do is provide Hollywood with a vehicle that was literally turnkey. It was made for filming, and they had a lot of interesting adaptations, the foremost of which you really can't see looking at the outside of the car, and that was independent rear suspension. Now, when you think about a car following the action, you're gonna have to make some hard turns, you're gonna have to go over some, uneven pavement, some uneven dirt and rocks and things, and you're gonna want as stable a platform as you can. Well, the upshot was that you were gonna to have to make some sharp turns. You're gonna to have to make some, some quick movements. And for that, in order to have as stable a vehicle as possible, you had to have all four wheels work independently of the other. So Chrysler figured out a way to do that in the back, uh, but for only two vehicles. Uh, other adaptations that this that this camera car had that not a lot of others did was a convertible top and you think well why would you need a convertible top well keep in mind that this is the day before microphones and before uh, walkie-talkies were generally in use and and before all the kinds of modern electronics that that kept the mechanism small enough that that it could be uh, easily manipulated and easily used by the driver and the camera people and the sound people and whatnot. So you, you put this down and you could really easily communicate. I think what you have to do is you have to picture this car with all kinds of scaffolding. And when I say scaffolding, I mean scaffolding. There was, there was literally um, lattice work in the front on top of the hood, above the top in the back and there was a platform that extended out of the back also with camera mounting equipment so here you had a really really adaptable vehicle but what do you do when the car needs occasional maintenance for example what if you have to top off the radiator or or take care of one of the other um, uh, in, internal mechanisms of the car chrysler engineers thought well if it's going to have all these kind of scaffolding on top why don't we make little hatches that you, that you can access the components with um, without having to remove everything. So they ingeniously fitted a, a little hatch here that you did, undid two Zeus fasteners. It popped up and you could service the radiator, do what you needed up front. Interestingly, they also had a hatch. You undid two Zeus fasteners. It flipped up on a uh, kind of a piano hinge and you could service uh, whatever components you needed to that were at the firewall of the car. So this is Chrysler thinking a little bit of uh, a little bit ahead. Uh, Chrysler also, when you think of cooling, um, 
Cooling was kind of a big deal because these cars were put to hard use. And keep in mind, this is Southern California. They were often shooting in deserts. And also keep in mind that the late 40s, early 50s, they were shooting a lot of Westerns and it got hot and it got dusty on, on set. So, so Chrysler gave this car an especially large uh, grill, especially large radiator opening. Well, if you would open the hood, you would see what you would probably see under any Chrysler straight eight, a very large engine, eight in a row, uh, powerful in its day, and quite enough to get the job done with a camera car. To kind of give themselves a little pat on the back, to tell everybody that, hey, this is us thinking out of the box, Chrysler Engineering put tags on uh, each side of both of the cars. So it was very, very clear that this was not a chop job. This was engineered by Chrysler in-house. Another interesting feature was the location of the spare tire, which, which kind of harkened to the classic era when you had the tires on the side of the vehicle. Well, it's uh, somewhat doubtful that they would have been filming with the spare tire on the car because that would have been kept with another vehicle and they would have been uh, easily accessible if it was ever needed. But just in case, they had a provision for mounting a spare. And interestingly, they also had under bed compartments. And you could use these for storage. You could also use them for counterweights. Uh, for example, if you had a, a camera on one side and you knew you were gonna be making a specially sharp turn and you, and you wanted to, to weigh the chassis to keep it as, as, as flat as possible, even though the independent rear suspension would help you with that, you could put weights in here. But you could also store apparatus. You could store extra microphones, extra lights, uh, extra lenses, whatever you thought you would need. So we're fortunate that, uh, that, that two of them were built and both of them survived. One of them actually ended up um, with Desilu Studios, uh, Desi Arnez and Lucio Ball's studio for filming. Um, and we have photographs on, on file, and I think you can look at some of them right now showing uh, the apparatus that was uh, put in place for the vehicles and how uh, adaptable these really were. Well, engineering cars from scratch with independent rear suspension and making all the special components was a good idea at the time. And, and Chrysler thought, yeah, this is really gonna be something. But then pickups, pickup trucks, and flatbeds started to come to the fore. And they, those were becoming better and better engineered until they said, you know what? Uh, we really don't need to go through this kind of expense. We'll just buy a pickup truck. We will outfit it the way we need to. We'll put a platform on the front. We'd have to do it to this car anyway. We would put a platform on the back. We would adapt them for this kind of use. And since pickup trucks were made for uh, rugged use, they were halfway there. So we're lucky, again, that both of these survived. Uh, uh, both of them are in amazingly original condition. When you think that 1951, they were originally built and to have survived all these years, uh, especially hard use in Hollywood. And Hollywood is not known for being nice to cars, especially behind the camera. Well, thank you for joining us on another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. We'll see you next time.